Hey guys! Welcome to the Lula May Design YouTube channel. I'm Erin Holland. I'm the owner and designer behind Lula May Design. I'm also the wellness coach at Lula May Essentials. And I'm here today to start a new YouTube series on crystal healing, the basics simplified. So I don't know if you've been using crystals for a long time. Maybe you have. Maybe you're just getting started with them. But when I started using crystals, I got really frustrated at the beginning because I could feel that they worked. I understood that they were helping me, but it was hard to understand why or how the process even worked. And when I went to the internet, Googled things, bought books, et cetera, et cetera, it was really hard to find a scientific explanation that really simplified it down into a way that anyone could understand. So I decided, why not create that? So we're going to do a YouTube series that is just for you guys and it is just on how to get started using crystals, how to understand how they work, why they work, why are they so important. So of course what we're going to start with is what are crystals, right? Crystals, minerals, uh, gemstones. What do all those words mean? Are they different? Are they the same? And does it matter? So first up, what's the definition of a crystal? Well, a crystal is any solid substance whose atoms, ions, or molecules have a replicating pattern that extends into three dimensions. Now this replicating pattern is orderly and repeatable. So basically, it is the strongest structure of anything that exists. Now, is everything that we wear as jewelry that we use for healing, right, are they all crystals? So actually, if you look at the definition of a crystal, it's actually broader than what we mean when we say crystals like an amethyst, right? So let's look at what is a mineral. When we use the term crystal, we usually mean something more like mineral. A mineral is any inorganic and naturally occurring substance that has a crystalline structure. So if it's a mineral, then it's a crystal. But not all crystals are minerals. So that's the key. So minerals are inorganic, naturally occurring crystals. All right? So, yes, that is something like an amethyst, something like a rose quartz, right? Uh, something like a citrine. Any of the things that you would use for crystal healing, almost any of the things that you would use for crystal healing, are minerals. But what is the difference between a crystal then, in the terms of an inorganic mineral that has a crystalline structure, what is the difference between that and a gemstone? So the main thing is, that all crystals are types of gemstones, but not all gemstones are crystals. A gemstone is a rare mineral that is highly prized and often used for jewelry making. Think about a diamond, think about a ruby, right? So those are gemstones, but a crystal, if it is not rare, or if it's not really considered highly prized uh, as a beautiful piece for jewelry, might not be considered a gemstone. So take for instance, my rose quartz here. I love this rose quartz. It has fantastic healing properties, but I wouldn't consider it a gemstone because you couldn't really easily polish and cut this up. I couldn't and turn it into a piece of jewelry and sell it for a lot of money, right? So a gemstone naturally has that sense of value attached to it that is separate from healing value. Okay, so once we've established the fact that crystals can be gemstones, but not all gemstones are crystals. Well, how do you divide what is a gemstone? So there's precious gemstones and there's semi-precious gemstones. And traditionally, the precious gemstones would be diamond, ruby, sapphire, and emerald. Anything else would be considered a semi-precious gemstone. So there you have amethyst, aventurine, uh, citrine, amazonite, just to name a few. All of those are semi-precious gemstones. But here's the trick. There are other things that are gemstones that aren't crystals. An example of that would be lapis lazuli, which is really a rock. It's actually multiple different minerals, multiple different inorganic naturally occurring crystalline structures that are in the same rock together. So you couldn't call it a crystal because it's made up of a bunch of different crystals. Does that make sense? Another good example would be amber, which is not an inorganic compound and it doesn't have a crystalline structure. 
It's actually made from tree sap, tree resin, that has formed over thousands and thousands of years. But it does have healing properties, and it is gorgeous, and it's used for jewelry, and so therefore it's considered a gemstone, and it's used in the same practice with crystals, even though it doesn't count technically as a crystal. So to recap, long story short, a crystal is any substance, any solid substance, which has a crystalline structure. That means it has its atoms, its molecules, or its ions set up in a repeatable pattern that goes into three dimensions. All right? When we say crystal, like rose quartz, like amethyst, like citrine, we're really referring to minerals. And minerals are inorganic and naturally occurring compounds that have a crystalline structure. All right? So, gemstones. Some crystals are gemstones. The ones that would be rare enough and highly prized enough and beautiful enough to add value to them monetarily to be used in jewelry. Subjective. So, I'm wearing this gorgeous Amazonite that I've wrapped in copper. Now, to me, this is a gemstone because it's beautiful enough for me to put into a piece of jewelry, whereas this lovely crystal is not really realistic for me to be using for jewelry, so I think of it more as a healing crystal than I do as a gemstone. Both of them have healing properties, both of them are fantastic, but that's the difference. Then, if you want to talk about gemstones, precious, which would be ruby, diamond, emerald, sapphire, and semi-precious, which is all of the other crystals that are of value enough to be considered gemstones, as well as things like lapis lazuli, which have multiple crystals within their structure, and things like amber, which are actually an organic compound. They're not inorganic. Hope that makes sense, guys. Hope that that helps you figure out a little bit more about crystals. Next time, what I really want to talk about is why does it matter? This whole crystal and structure thing, right? This whole orderly and repeatable pattern in three dimensions. What is it about that that gives them the healing properties? All right, so next time, tune in for part two, which is going to be why does the structure of a crystal give it healing properties? So until then, guys, thank you so much. If you love this video, please share it with another crystal lover. If you want to watch my next video, if you want to learn more about crystals, or if you want to learn about wellness or essential oils, go ahead and subscribe. I am always putting videos on here, and I would love for you to stay tuned and learn more. And leave a comment if you have a question. If maybe there's something you disagree with, or if you want me to give you a little bit more details, that's fine too. So just leave a comment below, and I'll see you next time, guys. Bye.